right. What do you guys think? Canadiana? Sure. Well, I've got a smile on my face and I've got four walls around me. I've got a smile in the sky, all the water surround me. Oh, you know. Yeah, I'll stumble if they push me around. Let's all fall, but I'll never lie down. It's not so bad. And I say, hey, 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 it's just an ordinary day. All your state of mind At the end of the day you just got to say it's alright Cause I've got a smile on my face and I've got four walls around me That's the best. That's amazing. I don't want to do a podcast anymore. I don't want to listen to <laughs> soon. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, so we used to make our living playing music, so that's kind of the back the backstory there. Uh, are you going to go back to it one day? <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. We'll see if the Bunky uh, game slows down for us. You should yeah. go back to it. Welcome, guys. That was Thanks a blast. Thank us, you so much. Thanks for having us. This is great that you guys are like, uh, you guys found the show, I guess, or your team found the show, and then yeah, we got I think talking. We were, we were reaching out to different people and found the show and just loved it, and yeah. Nice. Pretty excited so to be thank here. you, thank you for opening up the show that way. That was yeah. great. I want other people to get topped up and <laughs> bring in the band, bring in everybody, and start doing it. So welcome. We got David and Carrie here from Bunky Life, Bunky Life Inc. or Bunky Life. Yeah, Bunky Life. Bunky Life from the yeah. Bunky Life, right? Yeah. We're gonna have an interesting conversation about how you guys got started and how business is going and how it's work expanding and how it's a hundred percent applicable to trades people listening to right now. Yeah, hopefully we can add some value to the people listening. I know I remember exactly where I was five, six years ago, and a podcast like yours would have been amazing if it existed back then, right? Podcast would have been amazing for myself. <laughs> back, yeah. Back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just started, so we're just getting out there, and it's good. So I'm, I'm glad that it's out there now, and we get to meet wonderful people like yourselves, and then we get talking about the business, right? Quick shout-outs. Uh, M&J, I'm wearing his long sleeve T-shirt. It's ball coming along so long sleeves and toques and they're all gonna be ready so thanks uh matthew and james there uh we got david and carrie here from bunky life and it's uh website is bunkylife.com reach them on their phone number at 8664 bunky the number four and then their email is info at bunkylife.com and then all over social it's at bunky life except for tiktok you were saying it's bunky life official yes that's where we're at um so what was i know i know the story but i want you guys to share it what was the nucleus of this? Like, how did it all you guys get started? So, Bunky Life for us was just uh, scratching our own itch. So, we live in the country about an hour outside of Toronto okay. and uh, had our first kid, which eliminated our guest bedroom. And so, I started getting these emails from my mom David, I can't sleep on the couch anymore. This is not working. And uh, my parents live about three hours away. Carrie's parents lived about, what, four hours away at the time. Yeah, yeah. And so it wasn't, you know, I started getting all these Kijiji listings for tiny homes and yurts and trailers and things. And I'm going, I don't, that's not my vibe. Started looking into a home edition. And as you might know, these are not cheap things to do. Nope. <laughs> um, and so started searching if it's around. done, if it's done well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could have thrown like a little shack on the back, but no, I, I wanted to do something well. And the home edition was out of my budget. Uh, we were musicians at the time. And so we looked into a lot of different options and we decided on this little log cabin thing, which we could build in a weekend. Um, and so we did our first bunkie. And back then, this is 2015, um, it wasn't as much, much of a thing. People didn't really know what the word bunkie was. And so we, I started building it. And then uh, me, Carrie, my dad, Carrie's dad, we built it all in about three days. Yeah. I already had it rented out on Airbnb. Prior to the <laughs> finishing, I was actually... Finishing some trim while. Wait, but hang on, backtrack, backtrack a yeah. little bit. So you were building this because you were losing the space because the family was growing, but then you already started Airbnb in it. Yeah, after <laughs> once I realized what kind of cash we I didn't even make. have it up yeah. all the way, and yeah. he had it listed on Airbnb. Yeah, there's a literal Smart. air mattress on the floor. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, my parents would stay there, but when they weren't there, then I, it was it was an Airbnb, and so it did super well. I think I paid it off in like six months, and then I was like, I'm doubling down on this, so I built a bunch more. 
And uh, the cool thing about th- about the bunkies is they're under ten square meters. So yeah. the, the whole rules there, we get around the rules this way. Yeah, I went to get around the rules, <laughs> but the rules don't apply to a structure less than ten square meters. So yeah, so we uh, you know we were able to do a bunch of them, and then they were super successful. And then of course the next question is, Dave, can you make me a bunkie? And then, so that just accelerated from there. So that first one though, how did that go? Like, how did you start looking at that first one going, this is how we're going to make it. It's a puzzle. How did you figure uh, out the puzzle? Because you had to yeah. figure out the puzzle. Right. I mean, it was just a matter of uh, just kind of a little bit of trial and error. Um, but the, the idea is like, you know, it's, it's, it's a kit, right? So you just like slam it together, essentially. Like it's a big Lego kit. And it's so, a mallet. That's all you need. Yep. And we've got it down to just, I mean, Carrie, I give her the credit. She's got it down to an art and science now where there's a great build video of her building it. Sometimes with a baby in her. <laughs> a, lot a lot of times there's a baby strapped on me while i'm doing it i'm telling um, the well yeah. in, in history that's how it, <laughs> yeah. all the homes were built <laughs> yes totally absolutely we're talking about that in the first chat right <laughs> yeah. like, um i mean the the kit is so easy now where like you, know, you got a build video you got a little you got two versions of the manual there's the dave version which is like front face side face okay you yeah. figured out okay right? like two two pictures and there's the carry version which is like this is where every single screw goes. There's 47 pages. This is like a diagram for everything, right? So depending on who I'm you are. I'm going her way. Yeah. I'm going her way. <laughs> I'll go her way. Most contractors listening are going to go my way. Let's be honest about it, right? So, so yeah, there's that. And then we got, you know, 1-800-4-BUNKY. Uh, we pick up even on Saturdays. We'll, we'll guide you through the yeah. Like, we got a really good support thing. So, so far, there's been, what, two, 3,000 people have built these bunkies across North America. Nobody's failed. Nobody has tried and failed. How far north have they gone? How far, I guess, right to coast to coast? Yeah, we just delivered one into the Yukon two weeks ago. So that's a first. Um, and then down to Florida, uh, over to California. So the Americans are embracing yeah, it. Yeah. All, it's all new over. Fees, a lot of new fees. Like a couple trucks went to Newfoundland this year. Yeah. And then Vancouver Island as well. So yeah, coast to coast. And so how many, do you guys have a running tab of how many bunkies have been built so far? How many from the very first one to now? Or is that number just... It's, yeah, it's in the ballpark of somewhere between two and 3,000. Yeah. We should know that. Wow. We'll, we'll get our numbers together for next time we see it. And I know the growth has been just growing and growing because it makes so much sense, right? But there's mm-hmm. a lot of... You can customize some of the interior a little bit. Like you guys have options. Yeah, like there's, it's easy to add things like windows. Yes. Um, you know, so if somebody's like, oh, I want an extra window on this wall, or that's easy. Um, but then what's cool is seeing all of the bunky lifers, that's what we call them. I like that. How they finish their interiors and yeah. stuff, right? Like some people whitewash the walls. Some people will go ahead and put in, like it comes with tongue and groove flooring. Yes. But they'll put in like vinyl flooring. Some will run electricity. Some will, there's some cool stuff that are people are getting have done. the men like making them dark stained and turning it into a little bit of a cigar room of yeah. some sort so like the smell of man books and, and mahogany yeah that kind <laughs> yeah. of idea yeah. you're getting all but that's what it is or you can just doll it up and you could and so it's, it's kids as well and how many square feet is it i mean you've did for models but yeah so like our, our our main niche is like basically roughly around 100 square feet under yes. under 10 square meters here yes. in ontario and most of canada um, and then we've got bigger models up to 160 square feet. Those will do well in, in Michigan and other places. Um, and then we've got lot. So the, a, a sweet thing about our bunkies too, the most popular ones are the ones the that have. the second floor. Yeah, the second, which yeah. is another little, I don't want to use the word workaround because I know the government may be listening. But, no, but uh, there's a, a certain height restriction, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Like a, it's like a little bonus loft. All it means there. is yeah. just you got to build a little garden bed around there sometimes if the inspector comes along. You're like, <laughs> It's based off the garden bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that yeah. argument, but then listen, yeah. look how adorable it is. It's amazing. It's perfect. Yeah. It's a great structure. Yeah. Don't look at the grade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and so far, no, it's, I don't think it's another bunkie torn down or anything. So, so the good thing about like the good thing about the bunkies is they don't tick neighbors off because they look good. Yes. So there's that's ninety nine percent of everyone's problem. Is Instead like, of a steel monstrosity. Crap. Yeah. Yeah. Right, where if you've got a crab apple tree nearby, it becomes basically a tangerine drum at that point. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Out of rhythm, right? Yes. That kind of idea, which is annoying. But yeah, you're right. It's 100 percent how you can customize it, right? The bunk. I like the bunky lifers. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So where's it? Like, I mean, you did you guys ever think it was gonna be like this? No, no. When you first, no, you never thought it would become like this. After year one, I told them like, shut it down. Yeah, we were really <laughs> strongly <laughs> contemplating just shut this business down. Why? Why care? Like, what was the why? I you mean, didn't have a carry. I was just me. Year one. Yeah. Oh. And I had some brilliant ideas. Oh, let me tell you the brilliant ideas I had, Manny. <laughs> Share them. There's there's a, there's there's a kid listening to this. That I hope I can save him a year of misery. So <laughs> we don't I, want that. I'm I'm a marketer. I love to market. I love I love making deals happen. And my great deal year one was 
if you book a bunkie now during this sale, free installation, I'll come and I'll assemble it. Bad idea. So who, who, who takes you up on a, on a free installation deal? Everybody. It's the guy that lives on a deserted yeah. island. Yeah. I know. Right? I know. Up, up a flight of like 3,000 stairs. So that was my summer. Like I wasn't at home hardly at all going and doing all these How many of those did you do? Oh, I probably did seven. I don't know. Seven. Yeah. I only sold 30 bunkies, but there were a lot. Like seven. Ouch. Like, and this is just within Ontario. We were only selling in Ontario. It was always the people that were just in the most obscure places. So, so no free installation now, right? <laughs> now what we do is, and this is one of the reasons I'm so excited to be on yeah, the yeah, podcast, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we just say, hey, it's a great kit. Anybody can build this. I can confidently say even grandparents can build it with their grandkids. A bunch of old ladies can build it together. A bunch of young ladies, whatever you want to do. A bunch of, um, anybody, you know, even non-masculine uh, 20-somethings can build this. Whatever, you, whoever, <laughs> whatever demographic you're in, you can do this. And... Um, was it worse? <laughs> but I think you were going to say, it but now, it now it's like, oh, yeah, now it's just like, hey, if you need to, you can get a local time, landscape company or a local, you can get any local handyman, yeah. or here's a list of, you know, 20 good contractors in your neck, in your area. So that's how we do it now. Right. We're always adding to our list of good people we can recommend. We don't take any money. Just, hey, call Bob, call Jane, call Tony. And are you getting maybe. a few contractors coming along and then just trying to bunky life it a little bit extreme? They just, they're they're modifying it, I guess, to a point. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's been some cool oh, things. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they're, seen someone they're put almost like a church bell steeple on the top of one. It was really cool. Like a turret or something. Yeah, like yeah. really. Yeah, or just bolt some things onto the bunky. Like people, you know, build a bunky, kind of bolt on a little bathroom to it, bolt on a build deck. deck yeah. I mean, the I can see decks. Yeah. I can totally see decks happening. The potentials yeah. for upsells. You if you build a bunky for somebody, and then next thing you know, you're their guy, and now you're building their decks, and you're doing their other things. And a lot of our clients are like, you know. Uh, a little bit older, have a place in the Muskokas, th this type of thing, right? So yeah. it's all people that um, you know are are like they're 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 you're building something onto their happy place up at the cottage. So they're they're cool spending money if you want to build them a birdhouse. You want to build like they're they're cool with that because they're kind of adding to their their happy place. If that I haven't sense. been in one. I want to get in one. I want to check it out. I'd love to actually go to your facility and check yeah. it out yeah. as well sure. too. I love those tours. What's it feel like? Like, what's it feel like when you walk? I just get the sense it's that you like get a, a smile log, on your face. It's a little log cabin kind of feel. It's like okay. yeah. woody, you smell the wood. Um, it's a little bit like the vibe in the studio. It's a good vibe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, this is a bunkie right now is yeah. what it's like, yeah. right? <laughs> a little bit. Well, yeah. you can smell the wood. I guess yeah. you can smell. Yeah, so that's what it's like, right? Yeah. yeah, totally. And then all the wood is, is it Canadian? Yeah, we okay. can get most of our stuff from BC right now. It seems yeah. to be the best quality. We try, try to buy the highest quality spruce we can buy. So it's like J-grade like above premium grade. Um, it has to be really aesthetically nice. It has to be really strong and straight. So you, you're actually, the knots and you're actually, you're critical of everything. Right, yeah. exactly. Right? Yeah. You have yeah. to be at that point. We do. Because we can't just buy stuff that you're never going to see. It's not buried behind a wall. It is the wall. But you could still, are you still outfitting the electrical into it? So then you, you can't. Ju we just sell the shell. Okay, and then but if you, you can if you want because yeah. of the size of it. So then now you play by the, the OBC or the building code rules depending on which province or territory you're in. But technically speaking, at that size print point, because I, I think I mentioned to you when we were talking on the phone, how you can actually incorporate a um, uh, in-wall heat, right? So you can have a heat pump in there. So yep. you can make it seasonal. You can make it year-round, right? Yep. It's up to you at that point. Yeah, for sure. The heat pump's a great solution because you get cooling in the summer. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a really low footprint in terms of electricity cost too. And you still don't need the building permit from it. You still need an electrical you permit. ESA exactly. permit electrical. is my That's understanding as one, a non-expert, right? but uh, yeah, and it's going to get to the point where ESA is going to you're going to need a permit to just move a wheelbarrow. That's how bad it's going to oh, yeah. get. ESA, ESA is pretty right? intense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if you're doing it right, it's not that hard to, to wire a heat pump up in no. a few outlets. Coming so, off the main yeah. house, you run the proper cable that needs yeah. to go there. Yeah. But I'm just thinking because you've got such a nice product, might as well be nice and cozy in there yeah. in the winter time. Yeah. Right? I was talking to somebody at the bar. So we had our Bunky Life barbecue on Saturday. It was our fifth annual one, and everyone showed up, and it's a bunch of clients, and they're talking about how. They wanted. They needed an art studio that would keep their art supplies warm all winter and cool nice. all summer. It c can't I freeze. I can totally see that. So yeah. heat pump, and they said like, I don't think it even insulated the roof. Really? And they found oh. it was like. Yeah, we cool. usually say like, if you're gonna do that, just put insulation like in your under your floor as you're building, and then your roof. Yeah. And Easy. what are you guys recommending that you're putting on concrete slab, or you're putting it on yeah, you can piles? Go concrete slab piles are great. Okay. Uh, sauna tubes are awesome. Um, even just like put, build a little deck frame. You know. That's it. Yeah. And it's, get it started from there. Yep. Most of my bunkies are just on patio stones, a little bit of gravel patio stones, and then a little bit of fresh treated wood and go. So what's the basic bunkie come with, like door-wise, window-wise, and then you, it starts to expand from there? 
Yeah, I mean, they all come with, like, we start them basically at, we call them, like, pressure-treated floor sleepers. Okay. And so it's, like, it starts from there, and then your walls, your windows, your doors, your um, hardware. hardware, all your screws and nails, like, it's all in yeah, there. Yeah, the only three things you'll, like, we, we include everything in the kit, the, the bits you need for the dr- for the screws. You're giving yeah. us the bits, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we use torque bits. And I know. Well, and, I like yeah. torque bits. Yeah, like they too. grab so much better. It, they, they're amazing until yeah. you give them to the new guy, and then he strips it, and then they're yes. toast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you need you need good bits, and you need and you need the right, and they're self tapping as well, so you don't need to pre drill anything. Yeah, you don't have to wreck it. Yeah. So, um, what was I going to say with that? So yeah, the three things you need is you need you need to stain it ideally in the first year. So that's not included because it's, it's in your color of choice, and then you need to put some finish on the roof. So whether that's shingles or cedar shakes cedar or shakes. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Metals, There's super just so common. many options there. So we have a really good ordering sheet. Just grab this, print it off, give it to your roofing guy. And uh, that, that seems to be better because we're shipping them all over Canada now. And so for us to try to figure out your color and get it, it was a logistical, uh, we're not adding a lot of value to that equation. So, How yeah. big is the shipping? Like when you guys are it's collapsing like it together. 16 feet long. Most of them are about 16 feet long, four feet wide, four feet high. Yeah, 4,000. It's almost like a huge... Yeah, it's like lumber a skid lumber. Well, you could wheel it into the back, I guess. Depends on like the delivery They're company. Heavy. They're 4, yeah, four thousand pounds. The big oh, ones. okay, all right. But like most of our delivery companies will come either with like um, a Moffitt or yeah. a crane, and so they'll they'll put it as close to the build site as they can get it. Yeah, and then you just dismantle it piece, yeah. piece yeah. by piece, right? Exactly. Any piece anybody can lift, pretty much. So. And every piece is like numbered as well, too. Yep. She's thought of everything, guys. It's <laughs> you really can't easy. you can't make a mistake. Like no, A well, goes into A, and it just like it goes from there. It's yeah. just it's, 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 it's almost impossible to build it wrong. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just gotta follow how many rows below your window. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. Yeah, but you're literally just tapping it together with a mallet. Yeah, it's like a big. Uh, if you ever played Lincoln Logs as a kid, yeah, Manny, yeah, yeah, it's like a big Lincoln Log set, and it just stacks up and goes, yeah. So where are you taking Bunky Life from here now? I know you have different models. How many different models do you guys have? So have four lofted models and four non-lofted yeah. models. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then where are you guys planning on taking it from here? Where is it going to go? We got Where's some options. I mean, so right now it's geographically expanding. So we've got Makes really sense. across Canada. Ontario is obviously our home base and it's our, our tire test and true. But BC has been really big. East Coast. A lot of Ontarians move into Nova Scotia and New Brunswick right now. Yeah. Huge trend. So we're selling a lot out there in the East Coast, all across the East Coast. And then we just did a promotion in Michigan. So that went decently well. Free installation? Uh, <laughs> 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 nope. No. So I learned a we learned our that. lesson yeah. there. <laughs> um, we did, uh, we're, and we're, and we're just finishing up an Oklahoma contest because we're looking at trying to get a few southern states involved. They would totally embrace it. I think so. I think totally. there's a cabin culture down there in the national. Yeah. You know, so. And the U.S. seems to have, like, we've done a lot of research across a lot of states, and a lot of them seem to have a 200 square foot is, like, their, the their line in the sand, yeah. right? For most states, it seems like that's the common number. So I'm working on, like, just tweaking some of our models to offer, like, a 199 square foot version um, for all of their U.S. customers. Mm. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. I mean... We're just kind of responding to who's who's who are we connecting with, who's what areas kind of make sense, um, and then just keeping our ear open to like you know what where where are things going. But the trend of like, hey, I, I want to have extra space in my backyard. I think that's just been accelerating the entire time. That's like, not great. It's not going to go away. Yeah, it's just it's a it's a necessity these days, right? We need yeah. to do that. Whether it's it's for that space for someone visiting or what have you. Yeah, I think every home would benefit from it. Yeah, or just like the home office trend is huge now, right? And people are like, I can't get any work done in my home. (laughs) So, you know, 10 feet out into the backyard, I can. (laughs) But aesthetically pleasing too, like to the eye, just to kind of see it in the backyard. Like you said, neighbors will not, I kind of hate it. (laughs) Like I'm trying to hate it, but I can hate it because it's so good. I want one. That's how the neighbor conversation is going to go, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like it that you guys, and I could see people, especially tradespeople wanting to kind of, Add that insulation, add the heat pump, do some other things. So then, because we are, this is Canada, we have a winter. Yeah. It's just yeah. plain and simple. Right as exactly. much as it'd it be inviting and comfortable in a fall or spring in there, yeah. it'd still be nice to use it in the winter months as well, too. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. especially when your kids get become teenagers and then there's cer- certain extracurricular activities that you want to smoke in there or something <laughs> like, like that. Yeah, Maybe. Smoking room. <laughs> <laughs> we should sell a uh, Bunky Life smoking jacket. So that could be an upsell <laughs> for us, eh? It could work. Yeah. It could totally work at that point. 
Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I love the whole story. I love where it basically just came from a necessity and then yeah. it just became this business, which is just expanding and expanding from there, right? Yep. And we have a great, we have a great group of clients. Like, we, so Carrie's talking about that, pr the Bunky Lifer group. So there's like about 1,400 people that we have this little wow. Facebook group. And so we get... 99% of our good ideas are just like direct. Do they just them. share? They're like, yeah. this yeah. is what I did. Yeah, this is exactly. What I'm off. And yeah. then you're, you guys are even amazed at that point. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Get so many great ideas. And, I know. And every time yeah. somebody posts something super cool, I'm like, now I need to go repaint. The <laughs> yeah, <totally>. Thank you. <laughs> I like the whitewash idea. Yeah. yeah. I could see some patterns going on there. Like I yeah. can see all kinds of stuff. There's like been that. people who've done like murals on the wood. It looks phenomenal. I'm just like blown away when they do this stuff. And I was like, well, now I got to do it. <laughs> what about the whole I, I, I i'm assuming you guys might expand into funky life furnishings like does that make sense rugs so, or drapery or furniture we've looked at it like furniture that you know is kind of expandable so things that fold really small yes. so they're out of the way yes. and then get bigger and you know fold yep. up or can be so put away easy a fold flat ladder in yeah. 2020 we started uh bringing in this this basically fold flat ladder folds flat against the wall and you pull it out so that's been really successful and we started making that here in Canada as well. Um, and then, you know, like right now we have our factory just got it basically open about two years ago. And we didn't start making bunkies until last year. Um, it was about four or five months of, oh Brand my new, gosh. Huh? Yeah. Wow. So prior to that, it was like, you know, one wood shop would make one thing. One wood shop would make this thing. One guy would like would just one guy just chop wood. So it was like this, this smorgasbord of chaos across yeah. Ontario. And so we kind of brought it all under one roof. This uh, about t two years ago now. And uh, so that's really helped us. But the first year was just like, oh my gosh, are we going to be able to make enough bunkies to like fulfill the orders? <laughs> so last year was chaos. This year is like, okay, what else can we do? Organize chaos. How do we, year. yeah, how do we yeah. organize the chaos? How do we like streamline things a little bit? You know, what do we do with our, right now we're just giving away a sea can of wood shavings away every week. Um, so how do we, how do we better utilize that? Right. We're giving away to this horse farm. And yeah. things like that and, and we we give away a lot of scrap wood at the can you the not road. make them into i've seen people make them into like smoke or pe or pellets yes yeah, pellets. yeah. yeah. that's, that's right. an option so yeah. or even assuming. pucks that you burn them in green houses. yeah but yeah the thing about our stuff is because it's it's there's no chemicals involved it's just spruce it's just wood it's it's actually really pristine shaving so so it's actually more valuable as, as animal bedding right now oh yeah so we're looking into maybe maybe bag it ourselves and, and, and sell it ourselves but uh, that's like a winter project you know <laughs> So here's a real critical question to ask you from that very first one to now, I guess. What kind of tools were you using? What brand uh, tools were you using? Oh, man, back in the day? Yeah, back in the day. Like like hand redders and like chop saws. <laughs> but what kind? Like what brand? Oh, what brand? Um, I've always been a DeWalt and Milwaukee guy. Like okay, I know. Don't worry, yeah. There's no right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, like my, I'm a, I like my Milwaukee stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all the factory, it's now all pretty much all Milwaukee's. I'm not getting paid to rep them. I just... No, no, no. But yeah. I just figure where yeah. the evolution <laughs> no. is. No, yeah. not yet, yeah. right? But no, it's good <laughs> to know that that's sponsor. where it started, that you guys went from one to the other because it literally was just these tools that you guys had. Yeah, now, had this idea. like a lot of our machinery in the factory is custom, custom made. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to. You can't just go to, you know, any tool shop and be like, I need this and I need it to do, like, it just I doesn't... I need a bunky... It doesn't exist. ...perimeter cutting, grooving <laughs> yeah. machine. Yeah. Like, our one piece of equipment it makes kind of like our we have like a patent pending on our notching and stuff and like the machine itself it's like 150 grand that we just have oh, to I custom make all these i totally things. believe it but yeah but better than doing it by hand yeah i mean the, like but that's even, how you learn even, even the yeah. first year of the factory there was a lot of things we were manually do, like oh yeah yeah it was so manual the first really year and so now we're slowly getting automation figured out. I know you guys have the logs and they're flat face. Have any bunky lifers asked for it to be actually more round and having flat on the inside, round on the outside? Is that a conversation that's come up? A couple, not often, okay. but a couple times just to kind of get that log look. But I haven't had it enough that I'm like, eh, don't want to explore that yet. That'll be a, a that's nice, a whole other line in the nice pricey now. molder, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and then the thing with that is then you have like a, an outside face and an inside face, so you got to... Yes, and then your package. A whole new set of instructions. Yeah. Her yeah. version, your version. Yeah, yeah. And it becomes a different can of worms at that point. Yeah, yeah. but there's, uh, I mean, the, the, the sky's the limit with that type of thing. Like aesthetically, there's a lot of directions we could go, but right now we're just trying to really hone in, like who's our core person that we want to serve. And right now, that's like my family's getting bigger, and my cottage is not. Right, we are the solution to that problem for See, sure. Technically, you could park more than one bunkie maybe even three or four on a cottage property to have more space so you can have more people visiting and then they can 
sleep there, chill out there, yep. and then still convene into yeah. the home itself for the dinners, right? And then yep. when you upset somebody, go to your bunkie. Totally. A, B, C, D, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. <laughs> That's how we keep the family sane, all yeah. right? Yeah. Bunkie is saving families. Yeah. That's how our bunkie lives. <laughs> you love your family, but you don't love, love your family. family. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll love your bunkie. Yeah. <laughs> go from there. So I love the, like, this is all coming from you guys both. It's got to be like, I like the mindset, like just the mindset of the actual product itself. It's not, not like you guys have a cool product, but yep. you've got this positive mindset attached to the cool product, which I think is just becoming infectious with everybody that's actually buying one until you experience it. That's why I was asking when you walk in, what's the feeling that you yeah. get from it, right? But you yeah. totally get this feeling, right? Yeah, totally. Especially like, I think with our clients that build it themselves or build it like as a project with their family or their buddies or whatever, like they have, there's a story that then gets built around the bunkie, right? It's not just a building is like, like one of our early clients did it. It was a grandson and his grandfather did it together oh, as amazing. a project. And it's, they sent us a picture with the two of them together when it was done. And so like in our factory, we have a big wall of like, we call it the real bunkie life, which is like people who've sent in their story of their family building it in a picture. And it's, yeah, it's got more meaning than just like, oh, well, I got this thing built, right? Yeah, so. and I think that I think that the people that, that have a contractor come build their bunkies, they love their bunkies, right? And they're, and they're super happy with it, and it, it's, it serves a need. But the people that built it with the people they love, they love their bunkies, right? So we've really tried to, to how, how can we make it better, faster, easier? Like, how can we make that a great experience for those people? Because that's really like the core of what we do. That's why we fell in love with it. We're like, we built this. And like, we were able to say like, yeah, we did this. Um, I'm not, I'm not, not an expert, but we built our own house um, over the course of five years. After we did the bunkies, we started with the bunkies. Started with bunkies. <laughs> um, but like the experience of like, of starting something, finishing it in a couple of days with your friends and family. And like that, just that experience, like it's still something I still like, uh, like feel good about it. Even so like, like, what were you guys saying? Like three days? Like What's that? Today, like if you were to put one together, how long would it take? Uh, oh, I people, one, Two people, let's say two people. Two, two people probably people. give yourself, two, oh, trades people probably like two days, one to two days. Um, we have crews, um, like some of our contractors have, you know, they've done one or two, so they got some some notches in their belt and then they know what they're doing. They put them together in one day. Yeah, uh, they'll do a, like a 12 or 14 hour day, start to finish, done. Show yeah. off. So it's a great, it's a <laughs> I'm speaking again to the, the kid that wants some extra gigs here. Uh, <laughs> no, no. And that's what I want to get to yes. is like, yeah. how do you, so they right. contact you? Is that yeah. what? If you just shoot me an email. We got a little bit of a vetting process. We want to make sure you're, course. you know. Totally. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a great project to like squeeze in between two big projects. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When you have a tiny lull, you can fill and our it. Our clients quite. are awesome. They're not super like high maintenance people generally. Well, when, you, when you're having a typical construction job and a typical construction client and everything's kind of going a little south. Take yeah. a little bunky break. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. Just like take that, a little bunky break. Totally Fit it in. No, I'm not going to be here tomorrow yeah. because I'm building a bunky. Yeah. yeah. That drywall that I said face. was coming in last week. That not happening. Until next week. <laughs> uh, I'll get back to you. On the We're going stuff. over there to bunky break. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. all you. No. So they'll just reach out to you guys. Start the conversation. Mm. You guys yeah. do the vetting. Go We'd from love there. To, love to chat. And this is across North America. Like yeah. If you're, that's amazing. If you're, if you're in the middle of nowhere in Alberta, we can probably still throw a few your way this year or next year. And you know the people that have done well. They like start, it's a, it becomes a chunk of their business, right? Like, like the guys it are gives not, another revenue stream for yeah. their business that they can actually highlight themselves. And I'm pretty sure that they probably park one for themselves in their backyard. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a lot of the contractors that build one or two end up buying one from us because they're like, of course, yeah, I could sense. probably go to Home Depot and figure it out myself, but like, it's going to what pick up one of those little Pisa ones. Yeah. Is that what you want to pick or up? Or build it from scratch. Like you could build something like this sort of from scratch, right? Like stick frame style. More stick different. frame. It's yeah. going to look like a stick frame shed, but yeah, you'll save yourself that 1500 bucks of materials. As contractors, we know safety is crucial at all times, but having team members not follow or even worse, not know safety protocols is something that can cause stress and anxiety in the workplace. We face this and many other challenges daily from calling the entire team just to make sure jobs are done in a safe manner to updating team members one by one about training they need to complete regarding a certain tool or a new regulation only to figure out who has or hasn't completed the training and document everything in messy folders. We deal with a lot, but Connect Team is here to help us out. Connect Team is a platform built for managers with a lot of different capabilities made to ease communications and operations, helping you get a clear and live overview of your business while giving your employees one central and simple app for work. Connect Team has a free plan and a 14-day free trial. Try them today by checking out the link in the show notes. And, and spend and better 300 quality extra hours. materials too. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. You guys are not giving us hockey sticks. It's no. really hard for for a con- contractor to look at paying himself on an hourly rate and and not and not buy a bunkie <laughs> because um, yeah to do it yourself like we have a lot of people call us they're like yeah like I was building this bunkie myself it's not finished it's been four months and. You know what I mean? Wait, wait. There's a yeah. bigger underlining problem there. If it's right, been four well, like months. they're they're yeah, they're just this is trying like a to DIY home guy that thinks he's going to do it himself, ah, right? And okay. then they so get he saw some Pinterest po- post right. or something, right? Yeah. And then he's and like, then I the could wife do this. is like, "That's it. <laughs> I need I'm it done, done. right?" Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. walking towards it with a match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to start from scratch. Yeah, yeah, because I think that um, you know, there's somebody like I'm. I, I can relate to this guy because I'm like I could not build a friggin' bike shed by myself. It's just not going to happen. Carrie could do it. Right, but I, I I'm not gonna be able to. But I can take this kit and I can figure it out and 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 make it work, right? Um, and so for that that okay, so person, hang on, so yeah. she's the brains of the power. You can um, leave now if that. This is what you're saying, <laughs> right? The I tune do. was great. That's wonderful. Yeah. We'll continue I'm talking the face with that. And I'm the sing. <laughs> <laughs> she is the brains of the operation. I'm not gonna lie. I like the more technical side, and, and so you're the problem solver. Yes. Yeah. He creates the problems. You're the problem he solver. He throws the balls That's in the air. Exactly. I run around and catch, catch them. <laughs> What's the lead time for this? So if I wanted to call you guys today, when can I expect it at my place? So this won't be true of every season, but right now, like next week, we can get a bunkie to you. We're just caught up with all our orders just now. Yeah. Um, Will they slow down in the winter months? So or? we still take orders all winter. We're still making people's bunkies and we're just, and if they want them, we're happy to ship them to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we stockpile just hundreds of bunkies over the winter. And then the, and then in May, nobody wants these things until May long weekend. Can I get it for the May long weekend? It's always everyone's question. So right. like deck season, right? Like yes. Exactly. Call you in deck May season. for a deck in May. Exactly. It doesn't work like so that. So yeah, a lot totally. of our clients now, like they know pre-order. So we'll, we've started our orders for 2024 already. Yep. And so we'll start on those and we'll just hold them. Yeah. So until those people are smart in their May first. <laughs> and then those trucks roll out like two trucks a day with, you know, four to six bunkies on each truck and they just go <laughs> all through the season. So yeah, yeah. And, but now it's like, hey, like we can make things work. We can do some some cool stuff, and then we're starting like in Oklahoma, for example, we just started promoting. Yeah, it's not even nice enough. It's yeah, they do not want to be stuff. building now. They want to be hot. building so like they, maybe, October, know, November, towards the end of this month, next month. That's when it's nice. It's so. too hot. I know. I talked to a lot of Americans. They're like, it's always too hot. It can never <laughs> be too hot. Can, yeah. It could always be too cold. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, it can be too cold. You guys ever thought of making, I guess, a doghouse bunkie? Yes, we did. We did. Okay, I, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. I, because that's my first thought too. And yeah. how did that work out? Or did we've it, done a few prototypes? We actually had like a little, little matching one right next. Yeah, door. a little competition with our with our factory staff, and they came up with ideas yeah. for bunkies, and then we built three of them, and and just kind of. Yeah, we're we're still kind of perfecting it. It's it's nicer because it's something we could ship, like more Amazon style, right? Not we don't need a truck yeah, <laughs> with a moffet yeah, yeah. to ship a little doghouse bunkie, but but uh, still, it's not it's a little. Not, it's still, it was I think it was still like three hundred pounds. Yeah, so we gotta figure that one out because because you're still using the same timber. Yeah. It's still like a chunk yeah, of so wood. So it's a right? chunky doghouse, right? It it's is the kind of doghouse that the dog will be proud of and tell all the other dogs <laughs> exactly. in the neighborhood, like, come over to my place. Yeah, <laughs> do a doggy style. In my doghouse. <laughs> No, Sorry. it's just like a rickety doghouse that we're yeah. also used to, right? Yeah. Just get over there with a the sheet of plywood. It's like or the whatever. cribs yeah. of the doghouse world. <laughs> <Yeah. essentially. laughs> you yeah. see exhibit come by, right? And all of a sudden yeah. starts uh, showing us. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, it's not going to go that. What's he doing these days? Nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you guys are having too much fun building this business. This and you never true. even wanted to build this business. This is true. Yeah, it's been against our will the entire time. But it's not the best business at all. Like that, that's the purpose of it. When you guys accidentally fall into it and then it yeah. becomes something great. Yeah. And now you're building a lifestyle. It's not really a product anymore, right? That's what I love about it. Yeah. yeah it's been it's been a wild ride. Like, I mean, um, prior to this, we were running a wedding band. So that was our previous business. We were building our own house. We we're having kids, still having kids. Um, but, you know, we've been, I've been self-employed for uh, 20 years now, basically it's forever. And so, you know, th- you kind of start stacking skill sets on top of each other. So I still use the music in the, in the buggy thing. And then, a lot of the marketing and crazy things that we did back in the day for for like when I was was just a musician, I still use that kind of thing and it's just in a different way. So like our business kind of looks like a weird Frankenstein from the outside. If you look at it, it's kind of like, well, why, why do they do that? That's really weird. It's not, but it's because I don't know. I don't know what standard is in the in the construction industry. I have no idea. We're just making so it up. You know what? I'll, I'll just be honest, David. Like a, it's actually sometimes better to not know how to do things right right you'll come up with new ways to do things that everybody else is telling you you shouldn't do it that way yeah yeah 
Yeah. So you guys probably walk in the shop and start holding a cup of coffee or whatever it is. And like, I was just thinking about, and then that's how the day starts kind of ideas that would happen sometimes. Yeah. Like when we started this factory, this is our last <laughs> venture, right? We, we got our own factory. We didn't know how to manufacture things. Yeah. So we'd we, never had a factory. Right. <laughs> that so, was all new. So there's we don't Google know. We don't YouTube know. Video for it. No, <laughs> ah, I didn't find there was a YouTube video for it. Here's how to spend your life savings in a building. And <laughs> hope for the best. Just get into construction. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I, I wanted to ask you, so you've been through all this stuff and you guys are still trying to figure out everything for young and old entrepreneurs out there. What was your motivating factor throughout the whole thing for both of you guys? Like how did you guys build the first one, which is great. And you said, okay, there's something here. Yeah. But then, you know, you have some ups and downs with building this business. And then, like you said, manufacturing, all these other things you have to learn. Yeah. What kept you driven? Well, a big part of it was I, I, so prior to this, like prior to us doing this here, no one else was doing it in North America, right? So all the, all the, you know, back in the day, it was either, you know, the Home Depot shed stuff, which is kind of made in China, Uh, right? Yeah. You know, whatever. Nothing, nothing wrong about that, but it's just, it's not, right? And so I thought, what, like, couldn't we build, like, Canada is bunky. Like Ontario is where the word bunky came, so comes from. Why can't we build these right here? Yeah. Right. Why can't we build a high quality? Is Ontario thing? The, where it came? I'm pretty sure it's What's like the a, origin. I think of it, it like goes some... like a Musco. It's like bunkhouse. Ah. Right? Okay. And I think it, it, it was like a Muskoka-ish term, and kind of just slowly spread out from there. And we've also pushed a, a lot of marketing dollars at the word bunky over the years too. So we kind of like have pushed that term forward. Um, but yeah. why can't we build this thing here? Was kind of the thought, right? So yeah. so it started with just random wood shops. Right. And which I think was probably the, we couldn't afford a factory. Right. So we had to start yeah. somewhere. Um, but the just the idea of like making things here. Right. With our own with our own like for Canadians by Canadians. Like it's, it's something powerful about that. Right. And I still don't know if it was the right decision. Right. <laughs> I, like what do you I mean? The whole it, business? Well, just just deciding to like I'm just going to put everything we have into doing it here. Right. Because it's too tempting to take it elsewhere. Well, I mean, business wise, could we probably farm it out to some Chinese oh, yeah. like, thing? Probably. They're already could, doing it. Could probably yeah. shave some pennies off of the cost, maybe. Not worth it. You know? Um, I think I asked you that on the uh, phone when we were chatting. It's like, did the Canadian government kind of see you guys as, this is a beautiful Canadian story? I mean, we'll be supportive of it. I <laughs> think they saw us as. <laughs> or like, am I just living in We can get yeah. every time you make more money. Yeah. And you, like, uh, the more people you hire, then congratulations. There's a new tax for hiring oh, you. Oh, yeah. so that's how they. Yes. This is a beautiful Canadian story. We yes. want to take it away from you. Exactly. <laughs> there, there's a lot of times where I was like, I know why people move their stuff out of this country. Okay. So those those <laughs> yeah. moments. I get it. But, but even swimming up against that stream, like, I mean, like, here's, here's the reality of, of, of our product, which is a good thing. Is like, okay, yeah, it costs a lot to do business in Canada. Sure, whatever. But the majority of the cost is actually the wood, right? Which yeah. is ironic. Like, I mean, you look at the cost of a monkey, it's mostly wood. Mm-hmm. So, so really, you know, what, we have a very efficient staff, I think. We have a really mm-hmm. good hardworking staff. We got automation that's going in the right direction. Um, and our overheads are probably a little higher than average. But, but as a percentage, not that high, right? It's just, we got to figure out how to get cheap wood out of this but that's country that is a forest. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is really weird. Huh? We live in a forest, and yet, and our wood's really expensive. Our wood is expensive for the majority for of our wood's producers. going elsewhere. It is. First. Yeah, yeah. I think we're fighting over the uh, the the um, leftovers from like the the export market. I think. Yeah. But we'll figure it out. This is like our off season. We're going to figure this out, and we're going to bribe whoever we got to bribe, kill whoever we got to kill, <laughs> and we're going to get cheaper Canadian. But you wood. guys were were you guys riding? No, I guess you guys were riding the storm of insanity with the cost oh you were writing that was horrible yeah that wow. was wow yeah. so that was that was like you were literally ordering wood pricing out a bunkie and then not making any money exactly that happened was once just, well, we did, did one little math calculation it was a little bit a little under shy and we had to call everybody be like guys it's gonna be a couple hundred bucks more i hate it was just on the people. one model because it was yeah. new and it was just yeah it was it was tough it was you know wood all of a sudden doubled and <laughs> it's like yeah. i can't even yeah. Yeah. So you got to think about that. Like, and it, and it yeah. wasn't, it was okay. It was just pure greed by the way. Cause I, Oh I've yeah. Had plenty of conversations with certain individuals that control that greed train. Right. They were just enjoying the profits. Oh, sure. For sure. I mean, like, is it greed though? Or is it just like, Hey, like, like Capital. the market's Blind willing demand. to pay this now. <laughs> I don't fault anybody for charging, uh, whatever they, the market's going to pay them. You yeah, know? I get it. But, there's but a you got to think about that. So what it is, is it, it's, 
it's short-term thinking. It's like, yes. I'm going to squeeze every dollar out of this transaction now, but you're playing a long-term game with long-term people if you're going to be in business long-term. So my thinking is like, yeah, we probably could have juiced a couple thousand dollars out of people back in the peak of it. But that's not what you guys are about. Right. I just think like, I'd rather have them tell f five friends. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think what really motivates me kind of. That's the long-term greedy decision I made. Right. Which yeah. is, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But it kind of ties in with that, what I was going to say. What ties in with that is like, for me, it was like, yeah, you could get this like from China or something, but like. Our quality, like, I just wanted the best quality out there. I wanted, like, something that was truly engineered because <laughs> none of that stuff is. Nope. <laughs> and I'm like, I want something that's, like, that, that I can be proud of, right? Something that, like, is solid and, you know, for the people, because there are some people who do have to get permits for stuff, and they can, they can literally take mine and get a permit because it's that good, right? And I was like, that's just something you can't get unless we do it here. But unless for people that are listening... Don't be afraid of getting a permit. It's not. A, it's not yeah, that big a deal. deal. No, no. It's, it's more not. difficult to get your teeth clean. Like, <laughs> it's just like it's not that it's, bad. It's just right? the, the mafia wants their two hundred fifty bucks. That's, that's like, all it is. Yeah. All it is. Right. And you just gotta like invite the mafia in to take a look at it, right? Yeah. So bring have a pie ready for them yeah. at that point. Exactly. You know. I'm not saying that you're gonna bribe them. I'm not saying <laughs> that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just just be nice to your building inspector guy, and and yeah, no one's had any issues. No one's had their monkey torn down. And there's I'm talking thousands of monkeys, right? Yeah. It's when people try to like hide or, or uh, you know, like really push the limits of what, you know, what I mean? there's the gray areas and then there's black areas, right? Like that's not 14 yeah. feet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you guys do a little, I, I'm, I don't know. Do you guys slap on the logo on any one of the pieces of timber that are going in? We've got a brand. Got a brand. Yeah, that's what I figure. Is there, yeah, yeah that's what I thought. Brand. So I think starting, so starting next year, we're going to have every bunk that's going to be brand. I think we'll put it. I have a little serial number. So you're going to be Bunky 001 yeah. in 20. So it'll be like collector's edition. Which I think one do you it. have? Yeah. <laughs> you start talking to each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's like threads or something like that. You know, all of a sudden everyone's sharing the number of yeah. threads that you begin. And I'm like, <laughs> this is actually a, a badge? Is that what? Your Bunky brand makes sense as a 000. I guess you got to sell W or double zero or double O seven. Probably triple. You, yeah. Yeah. Certain our key numbers. A girl is a thousand this coming year. So yeah, it'll be zero 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 one. That would be huge. <laughs> Get zero 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 one. That'll be a yeah. big one. That's what I mean. That kind of works. So, yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> you guys want to share prices so people get an idea, but you can go online. You can see the pricing. Yeah, the price are all online. It kind of ranges from six k down the uh, Canadian to about sixteen. Yeah, kind of depending on the model. It's not crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's it's a reasonable amount of money if you're a contractor and you want to like have you know bolt on a project or a, a component to a larger project in a backyard. It's like a great. Great upsell. It's a it's a project like we said earlier that you can kind of slip in between larger projects and. Now, can yeah. you, in theory, I'm just trying to think of if you're selling your house and you want to take it with you. I've had a couple people that have asked about it. I, I usually don't advise trying to. Take I've it apart. had people who do take it apart. There yeah. have been people, but I just find like you know. After time, and the woods kind of all settled together, it's, like it's a unit. It's a unit, yeah. so yeah. you're more likely to like break it as you're doing like it. For when we filmed for Dragons Den, we had to build it in the studio, wheel it into the soundstage, wheel it back out, deconstruct it, and then we end up selling it to uh, Arlene Dickinson, one of the dragons. So she took it. Yeah. yeah. So we had to think about okay, how are we going to deconstruct this really quickly? So I just didn't screw the corners together like normally you. Would probably screw some of the corners. Because they walked in, right? So they had to yeah. enjoy it. And the last thing you needed yeah. it to do was kind of... Yeah, yeah it didn't... It that, we didn't screw the corners, but it was still very solid. There, it's made to kind of basically f almost like pressure Lock fit together. Yeah. 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 But the, uh, but yeah, the if deconstruction you were gonna process, here we ought to really kind of like think ahead. Because if, if you if you bury, you know, there's four screws per course times 20... That's like hundreds of screws. And you know how it is? Like you bury in the wood and it's like, where do you find the head? And it's like... A nightmare to try to pull that apart if you've the best thing to yeah. do is just buy another one so yeah honestly that's what i tell that's one. what i, I tell people I said the money you get for like property plus bunky is probably more than the cost of the bunky most likely at least in the same you can see the face of the new owners going there where's the bunky yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, it's we like bought the house stole the laundry, <laughs> stole the laundry machine and the, and the stove. Yeah, just took everything. That's all it is. That's yeah. not what we agreed on. We didn't want to do that. So you can, but you don't advise it, which makes a lot of yeah. sense. Just buy another one, right? Yeah, yeah. it does. Uh, yeah, people have asked, like, can I, could I, you know, pick it up and move it? And I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, they move houses, but like, by yeah. the time you pay, <laughs> yeah, you're, you can just buy where a new one for the same. Too, part. you're gonna take it down the the <laughs> gardener or something. I don't understand where you're gonna. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all like the tallest one is like. 14 and a half feet. It's like tall. It's 
Very tall. Yeah. You're going to get into trouble when you're trying to go into overpasses. Yeah, and, exactly. And you'll, you'll have those like videos of the tractor trailers getting stuck underneath the yeah. overpasses yeah. that are too short, right? Yeah. Like, this is a new one on the news today, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Monkey got stuck in the underpa- overpass, right? Yeah, 100%. That would be terrible. Are the younger trades embracing this more than the older guys? Or is it everybody That's a good just question. That's a really good question. I'd say, mm-hmm. so yeah, the most, like I'm thinking of the fi- faces of five or six of the most popular contractors right now. Under 40 for sure. Okay. Right? The older guys, I think in general, like as you get older, I don't want to speak for everyone, but you kind of specialize, right? And you get, you get, yeah. you know, I'm known for just really rocking this one little niche, right? And so it's the younger guys that are a little hungrier that are like willing to take on kind of outside the box projects are, are more likely. But that doesn't necessarily, like there's, I'm thinking of a couple of guy, older guys that came over and did a great job, Yeah. you know? Um, they liked yeah. it. They made sense. They're like, this is interesting, yeah. right? Like landscapers, deck guys, um, Pool, even pool companies sometimes. Yeah, hardscapers and everybody yeah. else. Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of part of their their wheelhouse at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you get a lot of trades. I guess would just be thinking traditional stick framing, and this isn't traditional stick framing. This is different, no. right? So yeah, those are the contracts that I find have like the hardest time assembling because they're just like, okay, well, if I do a stick frame thing, I'm like, right, but this is not a stick frame, right? right. It's like they. Because they don't want to look at the instructions. I'm like, well, oh, I, I do they think don't you should. They get stuck. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I, I do think if you follow those instructions, you will be fine, right? But they're like, but if I do stick frame, I would do this. I'm like, I totally get that. Not quite what we're doing. Are the yeah. instructions in different languages? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Should be, maybe. We need a French version, but we don't actually. That's, yeah. that's very Canadian of us. We don't have parlez vous yet. <laughs> no, I'm thinking like Polish. You know, oh, like Polish yeah. framers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you probably want it in that's that. That's fair. Right? And maybe you give them a bottle of Tisky. With <laughs> yeah. the, 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 maybe. I might move. I'm, t- I'm just being honest. Okay. That if you work with any idea. Polish trades, there's always Tisky on site. Yep. Uh, I never said that on site. No, yeah. I mean off site. Uh, on off the street. Site. Later. The cooler, yeah. In the yeah. car. <laughs> in the car. On the way home. No, yeah. yeah I, I could see the old school guys being like, I, I can perfect this better i'm not yeah. an engineer and we didn't do this and it's not something cut together properly but i could perfect it better no it's already set up it's already <laughs> yeah. designed to yeah like i always tell everybody like the two worst people to build the bunkies are co- know-it-all contractors and know-it-all engineers like like the homeowner oh, that's also worse. the engineer oh my goodness You'd every looking at it going you need a beam in here steel yeah w <laughs> it's like just no you don't you need almost like a beginner's mind just like just follow the thing it's gonna Back work to your out. point about how yeah. you didn't know anything about it and yeah. i think yeah. it's fresh i was right. dumb enough to be able to do this <laughs> smart. just smart enough but mostly dumb enough yes to make it happen dumb uh, smart enough to think you might be able to possibly do it dumb enough not to be actually trying yes. to think of how you know how to do we it. need more trades people like that yeah and then we'll rule the world with construction at that 100 percent yeah. Cool. And you guys love walking, like driving around and seeing the bunkies or yeah. when you guys get an opportunity to see them. It's really and cool. You know where your bunkies at kind of thing. We, we started a little map across North America. No, all did the you really? Pin drops where they all are. I mean, Muskoka is a huge area. Throw an air tag in each one so you know exactly where they are <laughs> yeah. at that point, right? Yeah. If they try to move on. Hey, we got a dot here. Moving. <laughs> we got it's a right. dot moving. It's on its way. <laughs> <laughs> they said they'd never take it with them. They were going to buy another one. Oh, the bastards. Yeah. <laughs> no, you guys are having too much fun with this. This is great. I love yeah. it. You guys hiring too? Yeah, we're always hiring. I was hiring good people for sure. Inside for the mill work and then the construction inside. Yeah. yeah, I have like the two sides kind of. It's it's more it's like kind of so who runs stores. what? Like you guys are both running, or you guys split it up? So Carrie's brother. Okay, um, shout out to him, Justin. Uh, got the whole factory up and running. Is the is the real head honcho there? We don't really have to think about the factory. It just kind of runs really well. Um, yeah. So we're there occasionally. Uh, like we shot uh, a, a follow-up episode for Dragon's Den about a month ago. And so we pretended like we had anything to do with that. But really, that's all Justin's <laughs> wheelhouse. Great crew of guys Movie there. Movie magic. Yeah. yeah um, great crew of people there. Um, and then on the sales and service, it's it's really, it's me and Carrie. Um, and we've got a small team of about seven of us. Um, eight, eight now. And uh, so it's about eight on the sales and service. And then about 17-ish on the on the factory side. That's, that's kind of the company. Size. Good yeah. size business. Yep. Do you guys want to talk about the Dragon's Den? Like, was it, or I don't know. Like, Sure, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I saw the video and you guys were pitching fun, it. Yeah. It was a great pitch. Yeah, thank you. At that point, right? It made sense. I was sold. Yeah. Right? And uh, But yeah, how was that a whole experience? I was, Other than that was, yeah, putting it together and then dismantling yeah, it. Yeah, that was. Right. <laughs> there <laughs> was, was a moment. The scariest part was, was the, is this bunky going to, f- it was a 16 foot bunky. Is it going to fit through In the, the studio? We yeah. had like three or four inches, I think, to spare Whoa. of the height and like, the, literally, so the morning we built it the day before. You built it the day before, and then the morning n- after we go in to do the pitch, and Dave is 
one of the wheels um so we had it on was it a bunch of dollies it was a little tiny bunch of dollies yeah. with like one forklift behind it kind of Moving pushing it, it. Okay. and uh one of the dollies wheels broke or something and like dave had to go under it to like fix some and i was like i'm gonna be doing this pitch alone this is not good <laughs> like pitch alone in that mental cast. scenario she was still doing the pitch she wasn't grieving my dead body <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just not yet. Had to do it. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Sorry for your loss. We're going to call this Bunky the Dave one. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> In honor of him. He's actually underneath it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there was, it, was, it was cool. It was. All years. Help me. Help <laughs> yeah. Me. Yeah. So once, once we got in and, and settled, that was mm -hmm. that less like, nerve wracking. And then we walked in. So, so the, was it nerve wracking to pitch them? Yeah. 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 So it's, it actually Which, is like the show makes it seem like you just walk in, you've never seen them before. You just walk in a room and all of a sudden, boom, there's all these lights on you and it's pretty intense. And then we were the first pitch of the day and their microphones were failing or something was weird. Something was going on and they're like, no matter what, you just keep going. And we're like, okay. But we're like, we're talking and like, they're all, the, of course, you don't see this in the finished cut, but like they're all talking, trying to get something to work. And we're like, should we stop or do we keep going? So, kept rolling <laughs> so the it. camera's on you guys and you guys are pitching, but yeah. they're not paying attention. To exactly. The <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then as soon as we kind of got out the idea of what the bunk, as soon as the, the big wall goes up and it sees the bunkie, then all it. of a sudden Arlene goes, no, Michelle, or Michelle goes, I've heard about you guys. It's the bunkie that you don't need the, the permit and blah, blah, blah. And we're like, I'm like, I didn't say shut up, but I'm like, <laughs> hold up. We're going to get there. Because if you let them start doing your pitch for you, it can go on some weird it's direction. It's going to go wherever they want. And then Arlene yells, I was on your website last week. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for a bunkie. And I'm like, and at that Sweet. point, I was very relaxed. I was like, we're yeah. good here. So we're she, good. they knew, of, or some of them knew some about Some of them you knew us. A little yeah. bit, right? Just like yeah. cursory. And so that was, that was that, at that point, we kind of loosened up. And then mm -hmm. we did had them build a little demo of a little micro bunkie there, which went well. And it was also, it was just awkward because it was like during COVID, right? So the producers are very like, okay, well, we can only have two people come on the stage and they need to be six feet apart. So the bunkie we brought was like a six foot by six foot. And so they're like, they need to be like six feet apart at all times. And we're like, okay. The unit is only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Walk around it. So, yeah. And then when the thing comes up and after we finish the pitch and they're like, can we go in it? And we're like, of course. And the producers are like trying to tell them like, Make sure you stay apart, and they just all rushed it. And like, of course, that's what this. I saw. They all walk right in because they want to see like, it. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It's like it's like a little. It's an adult playhouse kind of yeah. what it is once you get in there for the first time. So that was fun. Yeah, it went really well, and, and um, we like we put everything we had into that pitch. I can honestly say we left nothing on the field there. Rehearsing like, it and just yeah, a yeah. month of pitching it to every anybody that remotely was business related. I was like, we're pitching you on our dragon set thing on Zoom next week. So we pitched everybody I know that even owned a business. Um, a speech coach guy, um, like personal trainer guy. We uh, some guy in the cannabis industry. We pitched my my friend in the cannabis. Industry. Oh. So we pitched everybody. <laughs> Did he buy one? Uh, not yet. Brad, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> you need a bunk. You will. Um, and so so we really run through it a lot. And and we even had someone come and cook all our meals that week, so we could just like rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Yeah. So like you it was driven. Intense. Well, because like it's national TV, I didn't want to look like a complete I know, but it, it was like pitch and win and bust. That's it. That done. Yeah, you guys were gonna get this no matter what, right? Did they end up helping you guys? Well, so um, yeah, so I won't. You did get a deal. Spoiler right? alert! Spoiler alert! You got to watch the, the episode. But yeah, we. Oh, did. the follow up episode, right? Well, the first episode's already out. Yeah, first episode, you can watch that. Uh, yeah, where, where they say that they're gonna invest. Or yeah. I, I, yeah. it wasn't all of them. It was. Yeah, all five. It was all of them, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, and right. then the, there's a fall. Yeah, there's a, a follow up episode hopefully coming out. We'll see. So yeah. watch that. When did you guys shoot that? Uh, about a week ago, two weeks ago. Okay, so recently, and then yeah. it's gonna get aired what in 2025. Usually they air like s between September and December. Yeah. So okay, so soon so we'll should see. be coming out. We'll see. I mean, we might, we might be one of the companies that falls on the cutting room floor, but. I don't think so. I feel like we a gave lot of hours of footage. I think we <laughs> hopefully will make it till the two minute cut. <laughs> yeah, it might just be like buggy life, and they're good. <laughs> it's one of those that things. was it. Yeah. yeah. You, well, you don't. You're leaving it up to them. They'll, they, yeah. yeah. You guys will know when you see it on TV, or are they going to let you know beforehand? They'll I give us a they, heads I hope up. They do. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes just, they don't do that. Weird. Just, yeah. So now you guys are like anticipating what's is it yay or nay or what's going on here? Yeah, we'll see what happens. That's interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's, I mean, overall, our experience with CBC was great. Uh, really good crew of people. The producers, um, you know, was a fan of ours prior to us doing the show, which was really nice. And so, it, it, I mean, overall, I, I'd say for the right business, if you know your numbers and you have uh, something that you can communicate well yeah. about, you yeah. don't need to have an amazing business, but you need to have something that you can at least 
um, communicate well about and you, you got to know your numbers. I would recommend it for most people, but there's certain businesses really lend themselves well to a TV format and some don't, you know what I mean? So ours did, I think. Yeah. I tell a lot of people that are in construction, like there's what better people are there to figure out new ways of building yeah. or new ideas like you guys. And the thing is that, like you guys said, not everybody has all the connections or experience to pull something off. So you need to pitch it and get it out to other people and talk. But I guess there's a lot of fear that someone else might take the idea. Mm. But you got to get over that fear. Like, it, did yeah. you guys ever have that fear at some oh, point? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, people definitely knock us off for sure, right? Yeah. Um, well, we but, know that that's probably happening somewhere that way. Yeah. <laughs> but my thinking is, <laughs> like, in general pond. in life, like, um, you know, if you do something well, um, people, enough people will recognize that, right? Yes. Right? It doesn't, obviously, it's annoying when someone's like, yeah, I'm going to buy the cheap knockoff version of you for, because I can save 400 bucks. That's annoying to me. Um, but at the same time, it's like, would they have, like, there's enough people that don't do that. So that's all, like we're growing. That's all we can do. And so you can spend so much time like worrying about someone just take my idea, blah, 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 um, and never get it out there. And, and the world's uh, worse off because of that, right? Yeah. So if you can go out there and you're, you really have something that does help people, um, you're gonna be knocked off. I don't think it's work, worth even worrying about it. Um, it's more just about like, how can we move three, four, five steps ahead? because someone that's in a spot in their life where they, all they can do is knock people off. Um, you know, who they're knows not what, thinking who, that far ahead. That's yeah. Sure. Who knows? Like they're just waiting to copy someone else. So they're never going to be ahead of you. So here's the you interesting know? thing is that you guys have been on the show. We've been talking for a little bit now and, and yeah. we haven't even shown it. We <laughs> yeah. haven't even right. seen it. <laughs> sure. We've been talking all about it, but I'm already sold on you guys. I'm sold on the product by you guys. Right. That's what's interesting about it. And that's applicable to everybody that's in construction where it's like you sell yourself. Yeah. Right. And that's the one thing nobody else can copy. Right. That's so if you're worried right. about someone copying your that's idea, right. I mean, how innovative is the idea of a backyard shed? It's not that innovative. Right. At the end yeah, of the yeah. day, but they're never going to be able to copy Carrie. Right. And her level no. of detail and her no. support. And they're never going to be able to copy my insanity. Um, so we just really put that forward. Like that's always been a uh, f- forefront is like we're, we're doing this because it helped our family out. It can help your family out too. And here's our story. And so do you want to be part of that or not? That's always been the basic gist, gist of it, right? So no one else is going to be able to copy that because they don't have our story. Um, and so enough people are going to get, <laughs> going to dance to your music. It's going to be fine. And somebody that tries to do a, a knockoff cover of you is just never going to be able to do it. Uh, just got to get that energy out there. And there's people, yeah. and the right people will come at you. Yeah. And, and, and that's one thing is like, I look at it as like, you know, anybody stealing our idea, right? They probably wouldn't even see it that way. But anyone that's, you know, whatever, they're just like the liver of, of the body. They're filtering out all the people that don't care about, don't really connect with us and just want like a cheap thing. They filter them out just like a liver. They're the <laughs> liver of the industry. So do you want a drink? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm on the same page. I totally yeah. am. And that's why I encourage all the young or old, anybody that comes up with a new idea, like get it out there. Just, just get, get it out there. Because yeah, because you can go so much faster just by having a full frontal. I'm getting this idea yes, out there yes. and not and not stressing too much about getting knocked off. Right. So I mean, where, where yeah. are the wheels spinning to now? Like you guys must be since since this machine is going. And it's going to continue to grow. I could totally see it. Like you guys are probably projecting it and figuring it out that it's just going to keep on expanding, especially getting into the U.S. market. That yeah. There's going to be more and more of that. But where are you guys been? If you guys want to share, I don't know. I don't want you guys to divulge. Uh, yeah, I think that. it's just it, right now it's state by state, but eventually okay. it'll be a region by region, I think. Um, I would like to eventually be able to have the same offer to our American um, clients, which is it's a it's a bunky made in America for Americans. Um, that's That's a five-year goal. As contractors, we know safety is crucial at all times. But having team members not follow or even worse, not know safety protocols is something that can cause stress and anxiety in the workplace. We face this and many other challenges daily from calling the entire team just to make sure jobs are done in a safe manner to updating team members one by one about training they need to complete regarding a certain tool or a new regulation only to figure out who has or hasn't completed the training and document everything in messy folders. We deal with a lot, but Connect Team is here to help us out. Connect Team is a platform built for managers with a lot of different capabilities made to ease communications and operations, helping you get a clear and live overview of your business while giving your employees one central and simple app for work. Connect Team has a free plan and a 14-day free trial. Try them today by checking out the link in the show notes. Well, technically yeah. speaking, the wood's coming from Canada anyway to America. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I think what we've done here in, in Ontario, we'll eventually reach... Uh, 
will hit a ceiling of capacity probably within a couple of years. Um, and so, no, not until every single Ontario home has one. Right. No, so I mean, in terms <laughs> of our production. the factory, yeah. Oh, yeah. the factory wise. Yeah, and yeah. then you're totally going to have to set up another factory. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, yeah. let's do it like right in, like, let's Mid-level hire, let's hire people. Montana. Yeah. To make their own. Exactly. Bu- like, let's go where the there. trees are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they may not like that, though. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it is. Like, whatever makes sense, right? Yeah. And, and um, you know, that there's, there's trade offs. Like I said, there's that scary feeling of like, are enough people going to buy into this idea? Um, and then praying that they will. And so far they have here in Ontario, for sure, across Canada. Canada. And then I think that the same thing could apply in, in the U.S. Um, Australia. Maybe Australia. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just yeah. I, mean, I could totally see it all over the world, right? Except for China. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Except for China. Except for China. Yeah, there's no yard <laughs> in China. <laughs> That's true. Well, there, yeah, there's some there's some countries that definitely are more, like, Australia is one of them. It's like, basically, like, the, the warm Canadians. Yeah. When you think about it, like, you yeah. know, this vast expanse of your country that's way too inhospitable to anyone to live there, but there's a lot of rural kind of getaways. Yeah, the Australia, it could totally work in Australia, I think, too. Well, it's kinda, interesting that this whole segment is growing. Like, you're getting a lot of this smaller living space segment, and people are coming up with really interesting, like you guys did, coming up with interesting ways to assemble this and put it together yeah. and how it goes against the grain of traditional construction technique, right? So for the past 50 years, have you ever looked at like the square footage per per uh, home? It's been going, the inclination has been, it's been up into the oh right. Yeah, it's bigger, been, bigger, bigger, which bigger. Which is insane. It's got to turn around eventually at some yeah. point because the families have been getting smaller as they've been growing larger yeah. with area of mass, right? Like yeah. How, yeah. that could make no, it makes that's, no sense. That's a North American thing though. Yeah. I think that's, that's not a European sh- thing. It's not European? No, European, well, because they're stuck, right? You're stuck at a certain yeah. size on how much you can, um, like, I love the fact that in Paris, you can't build anything higher at a certain level mm. because they don't want that ceiling height to ever be touched. Right. So you're stuck with what's already remaining there, right? Right. So, yeah. But here in, in North America, we got so much land, so we can park whatever we want, and we chop up these parcels for whatever size we want. Yep. And then you park in, yeah, we have big families, got two kids. <laughs> there is a dog and a cat. Yeah, that's not a big family. I yeah, mean, like, I come from four siblings, like five. Yeah, we have five four kids ourselves. Yeah, so so we're like the weird. Family. We're the weird family. I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like like so you guys need one of those big big houses. Hey. That's the thing about it. You're not living in a bunker, are you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was one of the, the the rules. Is when we got married, we can't live in a van. We can't live in a in a camper. We need a we need a bed. But we can build a bunky empire. We exactly. can totally do that. Yeah. 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 But yeah, you're right. It's just like these homes have been getting larger and larger and larger, but the family's been getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So I think that's because, at least here in North America, and this would be true in Europe too, but our homes became like our weird savings account where it wasn't yeah. like a thing we lived in and we utilized for each other and, and we shared together. And we built ourselves usually, right? A hundred years ago, everyone built their own house. Yep. Um, it was it became this weird psycho investment, right? Where it's like, I, I you know, I got my money in... Uh, in uh, in my house, right? That's like every, like all the boomers' investment is like their house. So that's a weird thing. That and with narrow hallways and small bathrooms and small bedrooms weren't like I think master bedrooms back in the day were probably smaller than the smallest bedroom of today. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, right. For sure. And they never had an ensuite. Yeah. Nowadays, and I joked I think recently on a show where it's like every bedroom now has an ensuite. I know. It's- Wild. And if it's not that, it's a Jack and Jack or Jack and Jill shared bathrooms between two bedrooms, right? So yeah. it's like you guys have your own bathrooms. Yeah. It's Family of five and five kids, and all of a sudden you got to share with two girls and three boys, and you got to share the bath. You got a clock or something like that. It's almost like a punch clock. To go Carrie's, <laughs> Carrie's parents, the grandparents, raised what? Six, seven. Seven kids. Wow. Uh, in a, and my parents, my grandparents as well, four or five kids. In what square footage? Like 1,200 or yeah. something, if that. Like a little farmhouse. Yeah. I know. Right? We'll it's possible. Time. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely possible. <laughs> and like our, our kids living in these little McMansions having better childhoods than the people that live with their, like right on top of their brothers and sisters. I don't know. You know, there's arguments in both ways, but certainly affordability wise. Yeah, um, that's true. But now it's almost you know? like you could take the homes of today and just cut them in half. Yeah. And they're still too big. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's a different thing. But I mean, yeah. that's how you guys came up with this and it's just cause and effect from there. Yeah. And we'll see like, uh, like what is the trend going to do in the next yeah. I think it's going to go smaller and smaller homes because of the footprint and just trying to figure out how to maximize it. Seasonal is a big thing. You're going to have to still worry about winter yep. and things like that. But I think, and then plus all the new rules that have been coming out with laneway homes and mm-hmm. granny suites and yep. accessibility. There's a, there's another person that's going to come on the show and he's, he's designing luxurious 
granny accessibility homes, yeah. right? Who would but you say right now is emerging as kind of the expert or the the the, the thin wedge, tip of the wedge in that space? Globally or? Just here in Ontario, I'm, I'm curious. In Ontario? I don't think there's one. I think there's yeah. many right now. That's the thing. I don't think one, when you, when, when you first describing that, my first thought was boxable. Yes. Right? Yeah. But that's globally, right? And they seem like a scam. No, I wouldn't say Paolo. Have you been to the? Have you been? Have I you haven't met the guy? seen okay, it because I'm person. getting all these. I'm, getting, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm not. I'm. I'm just telling you, Mike. My, my uh, real uneducated. So if I, You've seen if it. I've, I've seen the, they're trying to pitch me as I'm not. They think I'm an accredited investor that needs to invest in their company, and that feels weird. I'm like if they're profitable, uh, and they've got these factories and they're all going, why do they need some random guy on Facebook's money? But if I'm wrong, I don't want to. I don't get debt. Elon so, Musk is living in one. Right. He bought one. Have you been to their, their factory? Have you? I haven't been to the factory. Yeah. I've been trying to get Paolo, the, the billionaire guy who designed it and put it all together on yeah. the show. He was supposed to get on the show last year and then he just got busy, busy. Okay. Yeah. Like if I I'm just doing a turn, really I apologize, busy. Paolo. But I, something feels a little weird. It feels like uh, WeWork. Remember when WeWork <laughs> really? was? Really? I remember WeWork. got that yeah. same kind of like. BC, somebody's pumping a lot of money into the story it vibe. Seems, but it I, seems like hey, a good idea. I'm proven wrong. I hope I'm proven wrong because the idea is great. There's a so, company absolutely. that I, I think was, uh, have you heard of Beck, B-E-C-C? No, okay. They're in, uh, actually by you guys. They're, uh, um, I went to the factory and we were supposed to do a show and we're still trying to figure that out. But they're doing modular construction here, but they, they've gone away from the sea can. Okay. So originally a lot of people were doing C-cans or doing that, yeah. right? And then there's limitations based on the size, width, length, whatever. Like you had to So they've gone to the point where they brought in engineers to design the framing now that's within the same limits as a C-can, but better opportunities yeah. regarding mechanically and structural speed. Yeah, because a right? C-can is not that great unless you're talking about the corners, right? Exactly, the, the, right? And then the moment yeah. you start to compromise it and cut it open and try to put it all together, these guys are actually designing it so then it can actually get all locked into place. But they're designing them, building them, drywalling them, finishing them completely, yeah. wrapping them, and then and sending them to the back, right? right to the back and onto yeah. a flatbed and either onto a boat or on a rail. Yeah, and it goes globally, and it's That's really great. interesting what they're doing because now you've got tradespeople walking around inside a warehouse, conditions free. Yeah, and building, and you're yeah. doing traditional all commercial buildings mm -hmm. uh, techniques and stuff yeah, like that. A lot of so Beck, Beck is yeah one of the companies that I would say is probably doing something here because a lot of that technology came from Europe. They set it up here. They're building it here. They're using Canadian tradespeople to put them together, and then they're shipping them out globally that's out great. of Canada, which yeah. I love seeing. Yeah, that. that's great to see. Right out of the like Hamilton area or something like that, and, and I was like, this is an amazing. And they're expanding the factory, which is great. That's wonderful. So yeah. that whole segment, I think, is growing. Yeah. And, and I, but you are still going to get, I guess, the stuck in the mud contractors like ah, yeah, stick frame. I can do two by four ninety six on twelve inches. Like I, I can do all that. It's not what it is. It's like a different mindset now. You got to think differently mm -hmm. now. And so, so we're, we have this debate. So we get the, the sad email once a day, three times a week, which is like the, I want, you know, I want that. I want exactly what you're talking about. Right. But I, but I have, my budget is like $20,000. Right. And they look at the bunkie as like some weight, some weight, and they're going to like stick the landing from like 50 years of bad financial decisions and some, somehow live in their parents' backyard or something or their kid's backyard. So, you know, does that market exist? The demands there and the solution is a complicated one because like you could build the best thing on like what BECC is doing, right? Build the best thing ever. But then it always, the devil's always in the details on the local ground level with the, your local mafia, right? That's where it's always. And I'm like, do we want to wade into that space? Cause like, I think what we do could be part of that larger picture solution that's needed, but then you got to interact with like, you got, you got project management and you got the local government, which like, I'm sure Two different kinds of mafia. Oh, man. It's intense, right? Because, like, I, I, I t heard about a guy that was building a, a, a basement in my area. I live in the, the county of Wellington, Aaron, Ontario. And the building inspector that was, like, a hired gun from another town showed up and didn't know what an ICF block foundation was. Atta right? boy. <laughs> like, in, in the year 2023. Atta boy. Like, come on. Right? And so... That is the problem. That is that is the most of the of what's blocking us from building houses here is zoning. It is a big challenge when and, you get inspectors yeah. that are, and, that, and some of them are great guys, right? There's a lot of great, great. But they there. should be like I learned quickly being in the construction industry. My first year in construction, I took off to um, IBS, right? Not the medical condition, the International yeah. Builders Show, right? Yeah. So I went to Atlanta because I went there. I wanted to learn more about construction, and I was encouraging 
all inspectors I was bumping into. Why are you guys not doing this? And they're not being paid to do it. And no, maybe they don't have the interest to do it. Yeah. And I, I've been fortunate enough to do certain projects where I'm doing something that's interesting, different, something that I came across, a new product or something I'm trying to. And you'll get those two different types of inspectors. One will be challenging because we don't know what it's all about. And they'll need all the paperwork and certification associated with it. And yeah. another inspector is like, oh, I get it. So now you're doing this because this actually creates a better building envelope and this product is done. And then they're educated. They're learning then stuff. they're going back to the office and they're looking it up, Googling it and checking it out. And it's legitimate at that point. So you're realizing, yeah, we're taking technology from outside of this country or inside this country and we're applying it to new construction techniques. But why is it that it's being left on the tradesperson's boots on the ground responsibility when architects, engineers, inspectors, they should be doing too? Yeah. Yeah, it's well. It's a challenging fight. At it's that a point. challenging fight, and, and it's like you know, it's a bit of like we should have the premise of innocent until proven guilty, whereas yeah, it's totally the other way around, right? Yeah, because it because it, it's so easy to like the average trades guy is is a smart person, right? But they're not smart in the way they're not smart at filling up paperwork. They're not smart with like the academic sense. They're just yeah. smart with doing things, getting things done, right? And so. You have a kind of inarticulate tradesperson trying to express that this is actually better than what you th right, and they get. But since they don't have the letters person. after their name, exactly, nobody's listening to them at that point. Yeah, and I've been encouraging on the show over and over challenge. Yeah. You have every right to challenge it and ask for a supervisor. You can speak to this here, Carrie, because like Carrie's like the a lot of times the coach for the homeowner that's getting. You know the local so you've had plenty of conversations yeah. with these so-called. Well, like I just I don't like when like. Um, either like potential clients or like a client who's, you know, waiting on delivery of their bunkie or something. And they're like, all of a sudden they're like, Oh, now I'm not allowed to do it. And I'm like, okay, why? Like what reason did they give Which you? Mickey Mouse showed up right? and told you that. And I literally had someone two weeks ago that said they had bought one model and they're using it for, I don't know, some storage thing. Right. And they're like, but my building inspector said it's too pretty to be storage. You know what? And I Show said, me in the building code. That's exactly yes. my response. What number, what code, <laughs> yeah. what part yeah. says it's too pretty? Yeah, that that's my response. It, because, But I feel bad because like some of these people just like, they get shut down like I that know, and they're just immediately and like, oh, I'm it. done. They don't yeah. And I'm it. like, just anytime, ask for, great. Can I see that in the bylaw where it says what level of pretty I'm number. allowed? I need the number where yeah. it says this. It's a simple, and they won't have it. That's the No, nice exactly. Yeah. And as soon as you started asking, just pol not being rude, just polite, kind of like, just push back kind of questions. Okay, can you show me in the building code where it says that? Can you show me in the local bylaws where it says that, right? All pretty. of a sudden, it just, <laughs> just goes... I like, couldn't believe... I really, you know? Too pretty. That was literally what they said. I'm like, yeah. how does that... <laughs> and I mean, I don't Early know what else. happened. It was before, probably your time, before my time for sure. Like at some point we went from like, I own my own property. And as long as I don't, it, I'm not hurting someone else with what I'm doing. It became, okay, now I need permission to like use my own property. It's cowboys. You had, you had a, a rash of people coming in, building unsafe structures. Sure. And then you had to start to protect that, right? I guess. I mean, I can see the argument there. Well, you could also make the argument, like, if you want to build an unsafe thing and kill yourself, go for it. Like, it's you it's not so much it's just when you sell it. It's when you sell and you kill the next person. Yeah. Right? So so, so this goes back to the law of Hammurabi, right? Which is yeah. like ancient Egypt, whereas you build something and now for the rest of the life of that structure, anything that happens to a dweller, you're responsible. you're responsible for it. And that is fair. Wouldn't that be great? That's why we do what we do. That's why we have why everything we apply that super to politicians while we're at it, too. <laughs> I don't want to get political, but you know what I'm saying? I think that, uh, that, that, that is a, if you could start with that premise of like, Hey, yeah, I agree. Right. Then guess what? You probably build every structure perfectly oh sound and safe. You would, right. You don't need a building code <laughs> to tell you that you just don't want like, and, and we do that now. We do that now because I, you guys are still yeah. being challenged, right? By some inspectors, by, yeah, like, depends, I mean, right? it just depends on the area. Like it's so different. How and is it's Toronto just, treating you guys? We've had people that put them in, in Toronto. Uh, we did um, an HGTV uh, build in Scarborough, right? That's Scarborough. Okay. And it seems like some of them are, it just depends on the inspector, right? And maybe what mood that person's in that day too. Like yeah. it's, it's even within a certain municipality, they'll be, they'll be mm. changing well, left different yet, answers. Eh? Oh, right? That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get past today. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah. No, I, I agree with you guys. It's just how it is. And it's not fair. It shouldn't be that way because they're there to um, reference and impose that book. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a series of general 
liability standards, right? Yeah. yeah. But if you're smart enough, uh, and most trades people have been in the game long enough, like every structure is slightly different. Yeah. yeah. But it's still applicable to code that's being put in there, right? So you yeah. can push back, like you said, and yeah. I encourage any, it doesn't matter what yeah. age, don't be, you'll be scared, you'll be shivering because you're pushing back to what you think is a person that has a final say. Surprise, they don't. Yeah. Who does ultimately? Is it the town council? Like how? You can always get to, eventually you keep on pushing it, right? The only yeah. problem is that, are you going to get to the point where you start upsetting your client where like, I don't want to deal with this headache because this yeah. could probably take into, they could put a stop order on it. And then all of a sudden you start really ruffling some feathers there. But yeah. if it's little things like that, like it's too pretty, that's just a joke. I'd just be laughing my ass off I know. at that yeah. point. And, yeah. and like you're in the industry, right? But you think about like, you know, 80% of our clients are DIYing this kit with their friends and family. Like it's just a different you know, they're not used to pushing back on things. Maybe they have a, a job where... They don't want to deal with it. Not, they think yeah. it's a scary... Yeah. yeah. The amount of times that I've had either a ministry of labor or an inspector show up just unexpectedly, yep. it's, it's, they, you swear you hear the whistle and you're waiting for a, a tumbleweed to just walk in front of them. Like, yeah. you think that there's like a showdown going on. It's yeah. not like that. It's, it doesn't happen. But I could see homeowners thinking that, holy yeah. crap, yeah. the bad cowboy just showed up and now I'm in trouble, right? Yeah. It's high yeah. noon. No, it's not the case. That's yeah, not how it works. The individual uh, inspectors that we've dealt with, like just for our own building. They're all stuff, good they're people. All, they're good, great guys. Yeah. It's just like, I think it's just a, it's a. And the bad ones yeah. just need a little bit of guidance from a tradesperson. That's all they need. <laughs> <laughs> I, I seriously had the one inspector. Um, I forget what province it was in, but this person needed a permit. So they, they used, like we have engineer stamp drawings, right? So they use that. And the inspector told them, like, no, you can't. It doesn't meet our snow load. And I went back to my engineers, and I was like, I thought it was rated for this. And they're like, it is. And they're like, where are they? So they look it up, right? And they're like, it, like, exceeds their snow load. But the guy, the inspector didn't know how to read the snow load. They usually don't. Right? And it's just like, it's it's so, like, I felt bad for the the client because, like, she's panicking. They get nervous. And, right? Yeah, I know. And I'm just like, just, I'm sure it's fine. Like, let's just, you know. And, of course, and. Our engineers actually called that in building inspector and, and talked him through how to read. <laughs> and it worked out, right? And it was fine. But like, you know, for, for the average client that doesn't have any, you know, they're just like, sometimes they just get feel completely shut down by that. And it's and like. And they're put off and then they don't want right. to go forward Right. And it's it. just and like. You guys are like. Which is, is so sad because it's like, literally that, that person could have like not moved forward because somebody didn't know how to read a snow load rating. <laughs> I don't even know how to read a snow reading. Yeah. It's all numbers. It's all it is. All, yeah. all you got to do is just prove. It's like you, it's not proving them wrong. It's just showing that your structure is not going to. Collapse. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the, I, I that's get that that's, that's the value that they could add to the equation for sure. Uh, given our, I, I get that, you know. Um, but it's just a, a, a series of everyone knows one. It's so much easier to say no and cover your butt rather than yes and potentially expose yourself to any type of pushback later. That's, that's the real thing. It's just like, it's just a series that everyone wants to cover their own butt. Do so you guys feel that it's almost like that they're coming in expecting that you guys are playing the system or playing the game and you guys have ill intentions at, at heart here. So they think that you're the bad person instead of being we're genuinely good people. We're building a great product that's yeah. Canadian made and Canadian distributed. For sure. There's definitely yeah. clients that have said like, Oh, well, I reached out to my town and they said, there's no way that there's, going to have stamped drawings for this stuff. And I said, mm, we do. <laughs> like, Call the town back and ask them what the word bunky means. Yeah. It's not in the, the bylaws, right? It's just, yeah. Yeah. Well, technically, okay, so is it labeled a dwelling? No, it's no, not. Yeah, no. like an outbuilding. Like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. It's not labeled a dwelling. No. So that's why that, that's why I find there's that gray area, unless you get the ESA involved, where now you start heating it and there's lighting and everything like that. But when there's it's small enough that there's no permanent vault, Hey, you guys are off the team now. That's, that's <laughs> why people get so excited when they realize they don't need to interact with their building. Department. But it takes a neighbor or somebody in the town. So I got, I, I, here's my red flag, and I'm walking down the sidewalk, and I'm just going to make some noise. But you're making noise at something that you don't need to be making noise at. Yeah. yeah. But you guys have had that all the time where it's like, mm. when you just want to be building bucking. <laughs> yeah. 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 And and I mean, I don't think it's a solvable problem, but I think that the direction that things have to go is has to eventually reach a tipping point of like, of uh, bureaucracy, whatever you want to call it, right? Red tape. And then it has to go the opposite way. And I, th yeah. I, I mean, every year I think maybe we're a peak, <laughs> peak bureaucracy, but then again, 
yeah. it's gonna get worse i mean i, so? I, I yeah. just I, I know it's great that all the granny suites the laneway homes all these other auxiliary building, buildings that they're approving you're going to get people that are just going to cut so many corners and then there's going to be structures that may not survive and they'll collapse and then there'll be an incident. Then yeah. there'll be a whole revamp of oh, those yeah. rules, right? Mm. But the ones that I do know that are doing the work, they're actually doing amazing work. It's right. proper work. Yeah. Like this is a structure that's probably even safer and sounder. Than, than the, the house actual. they're in, yeah. 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 So it's just like I, I dread all the new construction that's being built right now. Oh. There's that term like 50 years from now, nobody's going to ever use the term century home. Like they're no. not going to talk about no. that. You can't talk about a subdivision that was built today or even as far back as maybe I would say the late 80s and say that those are going to be century homes. Yeah. Mm, so that's that going to be a knockdown and we're building a new one now. We might be able to keep the foundation. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Sad because you're literally going to remove century home out of the dictionary. So you think about what did we build 100 years ago? Right? What was how what was the let's dimensional say, number was true numbers? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And cut. It was structurally sound engineer wise. Yeah. It, it wasn't McMansions where you had so many roof lines. It was literally a frame construction. Yeah. Yeah. So we all know the basic principles, structurally speaking. I'm not an engineer, but I'm just like, it's sound. Like it's really, really sound. It's not gonna collapse. It will never collapse. But now we build things that creating more problems. And then there's a if it's not built properly or connected properly, then there's an opportunity that it could fail. Mm -hmm. That's the problem that we're seeing now. And now you get heating and cooling and building envelope if you it's a building system if it's not built properly or sealed properly mm -hmm. then you'll have mother nature come in and then coming into warm weather which is creating condensation which Wool. what does the condensation do to to wood porous yeah. material oh, yeah. then it fails over a period of time and then you have a structure that, and then whose fault is it at that point when we should really be paying attention to how to build them best i i like the idea of modular i love what you guys are doing and there's more room for an expansion. There's more room for other companies to come up with their own versions of it, like Boxable, whether it's not or how that works or what have you. But yep. I look to like Scandinavian countries and what they're doing for their outhouse mm -hmm. versions and they're using white oak or they're using pine, uh, pine and all kinds of things. And it's those awesome. are safe, sound structures. Yeah. Right? Yep. So it's like, why are we not like, they made it work. Why can't we just use their theory and make it work here? Oh, we got to go through your bylaws here, which is like... You got to blow dust off the building code and start talking about, okay, we want to build it better than this. How about that idea? Yeah. They don't want to entertain that idea. Yeah. There's definitely been, um, at some point prior to my time too, like, like just kind of watering down of like, you know, that pride of, of like, we built that really well. I mean, this still exists, right? I'm not, I'm, I'm speaking in generalities here. It still exists in a minority, but it's not, the, I mean, it's not the mad kind of like bigger picture box. Like it's not the big box approach, right? Um, we were living in a subdivision. We first got married and they were building houses and, and, drive them down the street and plop them down on the foundations, right? And then you could see shingles flying off at every time it went. It was just, it was a very... Um, got to get them built. Every time... They don't got to get them built well. No. It's two different subdivisions. <laughs> yeah. And I think about how much pressure is building for like affordable homes. Like the demand for that is so high. And I mean, what is stopping us from building quality homes again? You know? It's like, it's like we, uh, we used to learn, knew how to do something and we like lost how to do it. You know, we used to build a, a Concorde that could fly faster than the speed of sound. We can't do that anymore. What happened? Money got in the way. Well, no, money didn't get in the way. Profits got in the way. Hmm. I don't know. That's a bigger problem. Yeah. It is. It's, it's, it's like a you not came really in here with a little tiny home. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I got, I got really esoteric and bummed out there. I got to <laughs> lift the mood again. <laughs> no, no, but I, I love what you guys are doing. It's great. And it should continue in doing it. And you guys are going to be doing it for a long time now. You're going to mm -hmm. pass it on to other people to do it. And then you guys will figure out where, where else it goes, where, where the bunky life takes yeah. you guys. I don't know. We got a, I got a 10 year old daughter, almost 10 year old that wants to be, I, she, she ready to start swinging the mallet. She introduced herself as the future owner of bunky life in all the oh, videos. Yeah. Totally. So, yeah, we're, we're in for the long haul. We're in it here in Canada, and we want to do it right here, right? And, um, yeah, well, time will tell if that was the right call, like I said earlier, but I think it is. I hope so. Yeah. I like to think so. We have such a great nation that we have all these resources. Why can't we be a leader and just showing everybody made in Canada actually meant something? Mm -hmm. Bring it back and make it mean something again, right? Uh, but one little business like yourself, it's not a little business anymore, but one small business, another small business, another small business. Yeah. And we keep on growing it from there, right? That's all we can do. And all we can do is just share it. So I hope the trades people are listening and then they reach out to you guys and start adding yeah. this as the we would love to have the saving guys. grace day of their hard week. 
Yeah. I'm yeah. going off to a bunkie break day, right? Totally. totally. It's that. a good vibe. It's a great, like, ex- you can, you, you're done the project after a day or two and you can you're write, an you're done. Amazing feeling out of it. And yeah. then at the end of it, you'll be looking at it going, I don't want to go back to the regular job. Yeah. <laughs> Luke, I got to do the 12 questions as we wrap up. I just want to let everybody know, David and Carrie here, Bunky Life, Inc., uh, www.bunkylife.com, and the phone number is one eight six six four. the number, punk, Bunky, and it's info at bunkylife.com, and all over social media, it's at Bunky Life, except for TikTok, it's Bunky Life Official. You guys ready for these 12 questions? Far away. What everyday sound brings you guys joy? Oh, kids laughing. Kids laughing, I was yeah. going to say the same. What's your favorite beverage? Guinness. Tahiti Guinness, treat. Tahiti treat. Oh, busting it out. Yeah. The pop? Yeah. Do you remember that? I remember. I could taste it now. Ages <laughs> ago? You can get it at the Milton Convenience How many Store. color chemicals are in that? Oh, who knows? But when <laughs> I was a kid, that was... Do you still make it? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I used to get it for you, that one Tahiti. That was like five years ago. Nobody's we found it in one place. Yeah. <laughs> Tahiti treat. What's your least favorite tool? Oh, that's a great question. Just say DeWalt multi-tool. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. The little multi-tools and the blades just break off all the time. Yes. <laughs> David. I don't know. I DeWalt's never going to sponsor yeah. this show. Sorry, mm-hmm. DeWalt. <laughs> uh, what turns you guys on creatively? I like I like building. I like seeing a finished product quickly. I'm the exact opposite. Quickly? I like, I like well, like, I like to, like... Put stuff together and like see the finished product and not have to wait like three years for it. <laughs> I like to build an experience where someone can kind of interact with their business and it's like it's different and it's an experience. Like I went to the Bunky Life barbecue last weekend, for example, and holy crap, that was a, a thing that happened and I, I did all this stuff and I I love building that right. And whether that's in person, like at the bar- barbecue or online, I just love building like like uh, like a thing that you can do a and memory. say like yeah, a memory. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what word or concept do you guys find overused these days? Synergy. <laughs> Don't ever use that word. It's the douchiest word you can use. Right the now. worst. <laughs> that's Yours too? Calling, calling the everything wor- the worst? No, no, calling everything the oh, That's calling the, the worst. worst. Yeah, so like I was in traffic today. It was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite curse word? Huh. I don't know. At the F word for sure. Come on. Yeah, probably. It's such a versatile word. What's your favorite vehicle in the entire world? Dodge Viper, but the old ones. First generation or second generation? It was a little boxier the second generation. Yeah, I first think first. First generation had those curves. First. Carol Shelby. David? I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> I like my, I like my uh, accent. <laughs> I miss my Hyundai accent. <laughs> stick shift. It's got to be stick shift, whatever it is. But does, does anybody make stick shift right? like these days? It's all paddle crap. I don't know. I don't know. I have a Hyundai accent, stick shift. Pay for it in I cash. think Porsche, uh, like they released a car and they it made a huge marketing push about it being stick. Really? And I was like, yeah, actually, if you think about it, it is a big deal these days because nobody's driving stick. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know if it, many people would know how to do that. I don't need this whole generation to drive. Well, yeah. they don't drive, they Uber. <laughs> <laughs> that what, do you guys, what do you guys miss from your childhood? Tahiti treat. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you guys? <laughs> With a flexi straw? Yeah, when I was sick. Plastic straws. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Plastic straws. What term or phrase resonates with your core, who you guys are? Oh, man. I'd have to think about that one. Extra space for meaningful connection. That's what we do. Yeah. Makes sense. If you could master a skill outside of your expertise, what would it be? Oh, engineering. <laughs> Technically, you are, no? Well, I don't know. You just don't, you never took the test. Exactly. Take the test. <laughs> yeah, you actually are an engineer at heart for sure. Uh, for me, it would definitely be um, just effective hiring. If I could be a master hirer, um, I think I'm okay with it. Do you genuinely it. believe everybody's good? No. Oh, oh you genuinely people believe everybody's good. a villain? No. Okay. No, but uh, most people are okay. Okay. Some people are, uh, most people are mediocre actually. Most people are mediocre, some are great, and some are evil. That's, that's where I'm at. So the people that I guess you're hiring, you're like, they just fulfill, they don't fulfill? We got some great, we have a oh, great team. Oh, we have a great team. Have and a they've been team. around with us for like, yeah. most of them have been with us for quite quite the journey, like a long time. Yeah, but of course, if you know, we're trying to grow, right? So Yeah, so know, we're looking hire. for that same like high quality person. Yeah, how That's, do we get that person but in things I don't know how to do? 
You know what I mean? That's a skill. Like the people that really know how to just pull A plus players out of the out of the yeah, mix. I don't have that skill. Yet. You need a scout. You need a bunky life scout. Yeah, that's what you need. Yeah, and, I, and what I, what I've been I, I've been trying to master the skill. This is my like the skill I'm act- actively trying to learn. It's like you know the the great people aren't necessarily going to reply to your Indeed job. They're probably actually already working for a company and doing a great job for but them. They might not be happy there. They might not be happy. They yeah. probably want to be in a different. Maybe they're listening to the Construction Life podcast and thinking, <laughs> "I want to work for an amazing company with a great vision." <laughs> and they want to email David at bunkylife.com. <laughs> if you could speak with an historical figure, who would it be and what would you ask? Oh, geez. Anybody from the past? Man, I don't know. Who would you speak with? Hmm. I don't think who made I, I'll let you answer it first. I, I don't I'm, know. I don't know. I would probably talk to the founding fathers of America and say, why'd you go with life? liberty and the pursuit of happiness because i think a better one would have been life liberty and keep your own property <laughs> the defense of property that's a good point somebody make an edit take the white out and just make an edit there yeah but i've heard that's really easy to do last question <laughs> if heaven exists what would you like to hear god say when you arrive at those pearly gates well done well my done good yes servant. well done that's all he or she needs to say that's all it is simple yeah. as that Thanks so much, guys. Absolute yeah. pleasure having you on the show. Yeah, man. Likewise, it's been a lot of fun, man. Pleasure. Yeah, yeah well, thank you. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you on the phone and, and, and hearing the story. And wish you all the best. It's great. You too. Thank I you so much. I want to pass by and take a look at it. And yeah, it anytime. And th- definitely. I'd love to assemble one one day. Yeah. yeah. That'd be amazing. I'll call so, you on my next build. I love this. <laughs> and then anybody that's listening, reach out. Yep. Reach out. Go through the vetting process, which would be pretty simple. Yeah. Just leave your ego at the door and just embrace something new and, and exciting. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. That's it. We're done. Okay. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. We're out of here, Angel.